Hello Slaymates and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Kimmy. Since it takes a fair amount of time to edit and record my scam baiting videos, I decided I wanted to get some kind of quicker to produce content out to put out in the meantime between scam baiting videos and I figured that scraping through the innards of Reddit would be a good way to go about this. So today I have a spicy story from the r slash am i the a-hole subreddit we will get to navigate the various dramatic train wrecks of people asking the internet stranger zeitgeist for advice and we get to be judgy mcjudgersons and pass judgment on them as we do so grab your libation of choice and let's get into it. Our first story here is called, am I the a-hole for telling my wife I won't be as stressed out next year because I won't be married to her? Well, well maybe there's some context. Let, let, let's, let's take a look. I've 32M been married to my wife, Jen, 32F, for a little over seven years now. Up until about two years ago, things were great. However, a disastrous move, a few family emergencies, and a totaled car have left us in a terrible financial situation. All of our savings are pretty much gone, 401ks empty, and we are hemorrhaging money. Before we bought our house two years ago, things were amazing financially. We made the mistake of buying a nice three bedroom house because we had planned on having kids. Those plans thankfully got put on the back burner. I'm assuming by those plans, they mean the kids. Got put on the back burner because adding a kid into this mess right now would kill us. It's not really a mystery why things are like this. Jen and I are both underpaid at our jobs and we moved into a high cost of living area like morons. I guess at least he's acknowledging some of his own faults in, in this situation. Last December, I told Jen one of two things needed to happen. We either sell the house or start making more money. The latter would most definitely mean finding new jobs that would pay us a market rate. Jen pushed back on this because she loved the house and her current job. I told her she had to choose one and couldn't have it both ways. And after a week of arguing, she agreed we would look for new jobs. It's been almost six months now. Last Friday, I signed an offer for a new job. It's over a $35,000 raise for me. Jen, however, has done nothing. In January, she asked for a raise in the market rate and was very disrespectfully told by her manager that she was not worth that. She was show shown the door to leave if she wasn't happy. Jen has taken this as putting in the effort and done nothing else, telling me we should wait and see what happens with my job search. Well, he already got the offer for the high higher paying job and she decided that she was gonna allow herself to be disrespected uh, and told that she's not worth it by her co current company and she was willing to sit there and take that. I don't know if it was just you know, laziness or a lack of thinking she deserved more, but it seems like that that's not going to solve the, the problem, of course, based on <laughs> the title of this story. I'm not happy about this. When I came home Friday and told her I got the job, she got pissy because I clarified that this does not mean that she can stay at her job. We fought again and I told her this would mean we only stop hemorrhaging money on the house. We will be able to save only a little and would still not be close to refilling our 401ks. Kids, the whole reason we got the house in the first place would be entirely off the table. Oh, this is this is where things start getting a little, a little dicey and the effort seems to be going one way, which as anyone who's been in a, in a relationship like that, that is also, that is very, very frustrating. We haven't talked much since then. Yesterday, her parents visited for dinner. Despite my best efforts to keep them out of it, Jen announced my new job to her parents by, by saying, maybe I'll stop complaining about money once I start. I don't know why I said it, 
But I replied with, oh, don't worry, Jen. I won't have to worry about money a year from now because we'll be divorced by then. Oh, yeesh. Things got quiet real quick after and I excused myself. Her parents left shortly after and she slept on the couch to avoid talking to me. I have not talked to Jen or her parents since last night. Things are very cold between us right now and I generally wonder if I did something last night that probably ruined my marriage. Uh, you think? You don't throw down that gauntlet without being willing to follow through. You don't say something like that lightly. I don't know if you thought it would spur her into action and maybe you, you, you would get her way, get your way with her finding another job, but you definitely don't talk like that if you don't mean to pull the trigger and end and the relationship. There's no going back from that at all. Not at all. As far as my judgment on this, obviously he didn't mean to say some relationship ending nonsense. Otherwise, he wouldn't have, you know, he wouldn't even like written this story. Since, and you know, if he intended to end the relationship and that's how he wanted to do it, I mean, fair's fair. But since he said something that he obviously didn't mean, he is the a-hole. But let's take a look at some of the comments. You know how firearms experts tell people don't put your finger on the trigger unless you intend to fire? Yeah, don't say the D word unless you are prepared to get D'd real hard. That is a spot on and an absolute reason why that is the top comment in this situation. He said the D, now he is gonna be getting the D. The first reply to this comment, it's what I always tell people. It's not a joke, it's not a threat, it's the beginning of the end. My mom used to threaten my dad with a divorce. He said, fine, and filed the papers. Mom went surprised Pikachu and still blames him for divorcing her. Yeah, that's, you don't do that. You, you don't, eventually someone's gonna call your bluff. If you, you e even if he, he was bluffing, it's done. <laughs> It's absolutely done. There is an update to this story. Updates will come after someone's been rightly depanced by the comment section and it does appear that this is uh, what this update is regarding. Yeah, I messed up. People are rightfully tearing into me for wondering if this marriage didn't end when those words came out of my mouth. I went to Jen last night to talk and she refused to say even a word to me. She ended up locking herself in our bedroom and finally told me to go away. I'm scheduling some consultations with divorce attorneys today. Some people are asking about the car accidents and family emergencies, mostly blaming me for, for them. The car was neither of our faults. An uninsured driver hit my wife's fully paid off car. Insurance gave us peanuts. The family emergencies were a handful of things that were unluck uh, unluckily close to each other. I don't think you can really assign blame to these kind of things. People will try and say I'm covering my ass or something and still blame me, whatever. The big fuck up was the house, which I was 50% responsible for. Before I wrote this post, I probably should have admitted to myself that I spoke my feelings at dinner and got my wish. And there it is. The one bright spot to this situation is that they never ended up having the kids that they bought the house for to, that, <laughs> that ended up screwing them to begin with. And it's, it's just one of those things. If some things, you know, come up and you're not able to weather it together as a team, then you just need to go your separate ways. All right, Slaymates, that's all I have for you today. If you like this Reddit content and you have some other subreddits that you think I should cover, just go ahead and comment that down below. Otherwise, if you liked what you see here today, uh, gently stroke the like and subscribe button and stimulate that algorithm. And until it's time to come slay with me, go slay with yourselves. Bye!